I'm David, David Burma. I'm a landscape architect and um, working in design fields and the realm of arts, and um, especially in, in public arts, I think. And I describe it sometimes where it's, it's, it's nature painting on the man-made canvas, where, as I said, nature does the painting, does the weathering, but man created the canvas in, in, in certain form. And I've, I've always been influenced by that sort of uh, um, phenomena, I guess. Yeah. Well, the um, photography that I did for many years and, and in my way had a personal evolution at a certain moment went into something more, more 3D because I, I deliberately flattened pieces that I you photographed them on, on the screen so they became paintings. They became literally flat things. It has trained my eye in terms of composition and in terms of colour or certainly weathering I think is, is comes back. But what they were doing was filling, sanding and filling and painting and to me this is this is art, although I didn't create it, I just made a snapshot of it, just framed it and that was all. It looks like a painting because of all the, the scratches and the, and the brush strokes and it, but it's because they are scratches and they are brush strokes and that's a painting, is that, isn't that the definition of a painting? Who folds who, it doesn't matter, but to me this is a lovely piece of abstract art or art, it's just artificial I guess. And then I started to become interested into the, um, the, the 3D side of it. So the next step was sort of wall art, if you like, where it had a, a certain depth to it. It's a lot bigger than I, I realised, actually. This is called um, Better Wave Than Sorry. Essentially, it came to life when I had these pieces, which were offcuts from a, another project. But um, I, I really like the um yeah the, the the organicness the the sort of uh, dynamics of it and the repetition of the shape in this direction um s s somehow started to work that's the above water or the threshold between air and water and then underneath there's this sort of sharp bulb bulbous keel that motors through the water to a, a straight course on and on, and it's made out of lead. I wanted it to have this sort of heavy feel, as opposed to the light, the life-saving area. To me, it's a Cornish piece. It's about the, the life of Cornwall, the life to do with water, and living on the water, and on the water's edge, and the many ways that people react to it, uh, or, or uh, interact with the water. It's also inspired by one friend, Toby, who is always on or in the water and who's this sort of, always does a sort of a steady course, at least he gives that impression, which I really enjoy that. And after that, it, it grew into something even more freestanding 3D pieces. One of the pieces that I want to, to show you is, that, is this one. This is actually from, from here. I, I call it the dance to my heart. And that's the heart, it points out to the heart, which I think is the, the wonderful thing about this piece. Points out, and then this dances around it, but it can't really find the original heart, but it points towards the heart. So that's the, the, where the name came from, Dance Towards the Heart. A couple of years ago when I created this, this became a very personal experience, personal journey that I, I had and expressed it in, in this, this way here. Well, this is a piece that um, makes a bit more sense if I speak about the title, which is it's called A Bunch of Flowers for the Wife. And um, really it's a, a piece that Marianne um, complained that she, I didn't bring her flowers enough, and uh, rightly so. So I thought I've mm, got to solve this problem for a while. And uh, again, from off cuts, don't tell her that, um, I made these, um, this, this bunch of flowers, really. Not many people know this, but on some, depends on the type of steel that you've got, but some pieces are at its peak orange, for example, 
they flower the most, the rust flowers the most, um, when after, after two weeks or something like, between one and two weeks, they get a very, very high uh, intensity. You can see a little bit on here, actually. She likes the concept. She does, doesn't see it as a, a cheap way out. This bunch of flowers make actually quite noise, good noise, good sound. Try that with a bunch of tulips. Forget it. Um, yeah, these are two pieces that are found in the uh, a metal worker's yard. The erosion over the years, it's got real sort of pitted, but then big pits, and that's it. it's got a, a beautiful quality to it. I think it's good to demonstrate, um, or demonstrate, but I'll show you just by polishing this up with a sort of wire brush, the effect that it has on the, on the steel itself is quite amazing. you start to see what I mean with it when I talk about the reflection and and the similarities between the reflection on of the sun on the waves of the the ocean when you stand on a cliff I, I give myself time to work on this piece because I've, I've, I love the, the plates themselves so much that it's, so I'm not quite sure which direction it's going but I've got several ideas of adding material to it but I think this this in essence this is the the directions it's going where you have a you know, the, the beautiful polished side on the outside and the internal side is more the, the dark side, the dark side that, that erodes and it's very sort of gnarly. We'll see where it ends up, but it's great to have some inspiring materials that uh, set the context or set the, is the starting point of uh, a piece. It's nice that the, the hobby on one side and the profession on the other side grew together more and more. At a certain moment, the, the landscape architecture started to break its mold out of landscape architecture into public art realm. And I started to use the, the, uh, the qualities that I made for, had uh, developed for myself from art into the, the professional design. And I find it a fascinating thing. So, and this is, you know, in the last couple of years, that we're really developing that into something more uh, that we can use commercially as well. May the dance to the heart continue long. That was that was not English, was it? May the dance of the <laughs> that was double Dutch.